Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me for something epic. I'm here at Laguna Seca as part of Hypercar Invitational and I'm about to hop on board Why Only 65's Ford GT Mark II for a run out with the supercars and hypercars. This is, of course, the track special, track toy version of the Ford GT. My Ford GT, you will know on the channel, a car that I love. This is what happens when road rules and regulations are taken away, the restrictions are removed. We're gonna have a little walk around the car, talk all about it before hopping on board. And if I'm able to guess what this is going to be like, and you can hear the noises of Vulcans and Lamborghini race cars and all sorts of things out there, this is gonna be insane. Let's talk about this car then, the Ford GT Mark II. Now this belongs to Ben, why only 65? You might know his page on Instagram, what's that? The Vulcan, Aston Martin Vulcan, does quite a few outings with it, including taking people for charitable passenger rides, which is really quite special. But this is the track unrestricted version of that, the road car. And of course you all know, as I said, from my channel, I love my Ford GT. They've built a little over a thousand of them in the five years or so. The road homologation of the car effectively to make it possible to go and race at the 24 hours of Le Mans. And with this special livery on the road car, we see the golf inspired orange and blue matched on the GT Mark II. Now the Mark II, if you're not familiar with it, is effectively a limited series run. They only made 45 of them in total. It's not the car that raced at Le Mans, but it uses the learnings of that with the unrestricted motor. So the three and a half liter twin turbocharged V6, the EcoBoost motor, makes up to 700 horsepower in here. So about 50 horsepower more than in the standard road car. But of course, there's much more to it than that. Notice the aero, for example, the flicks, the extended splitter, the extra louvres and gurneys you can find all over the bodywork. You still have... That was loud. <laughs> that was the Lamborghini Asensia SCV12. I was going to say, you still have the teardrop cabin with the flying buttresses out over here, the coolers. You have the additional roof snorkel, obviously for the cooling to the engine. And around towards the back, a gigantic multi-layered rear wing. The gurney back here, something that would be more familiar on, let's say, a GT3 car, but it's still super low to the ground. It's one of the best looking race cars, you could say, out there. Look at the diffuser back here and the heat shields to protect from the exhaust. And they come around inside as well. Show you in here, you've got the carbon fiber monocoque, but obviously for the race car, the fixed full bucket seats, the steering wheel being a development of that found on the road car. The central sections are still fairly familiar, but with the grips more like race car and obviously the full cage fitted in here. It's the customer race program effectively. It's the customer track day toy that they offered. Seriously limited numbers. Quite interesting to see how they've done it differently. A little bit more space here without having to have all of the road regulations met for the road car for global homologation, for example. Just looks truly, truly mega. And in a moment, we're gonna be heading out in this for a passenger ride here at Laguna Seca. As you can see on the start line, there are some amazing cars around. We've got the Valkyrie AMR Pros. We're just by the last corner here. The corkscrew is off up the hill in the distance behind. But that, combined with plenty of supercar out on track, is going to make for quite a fun run. No doubt it's going to be blasting past some of these things as the Ascensia comes past us in an AMG GT3 out on track. My word, the Vantage GT8R there. This is a day of epic, epic cars on track here and shortly. <laughs> I'm going to the Porsche shortly to experience this monster and I think the cars have set the alarms off. Oh, that's the Monza in fact. There's a Monza and a LaFerrari up there. There's also the uh, LaFerrari Aperta just here, I didn't mention. The uh, race wife plate, because race wife. The guys are always driving these Y65 and because race wife. So we'll see what's going to happen in a moment. I think we've got a fairly new set of slicks here, which bodes well as well. And go have some fun with this in just a moment. Given the nature of the car and the day, fireproof overalls, obviously. Now getting into the GT with the cage is not the easiest thing in the world. You've kind of got to slide yourself in and squeeze through. And then you sit back. And I tell you what, sitting inside here, the seat is so reclined compared to the road car 
In the road car, when you're wearing a helmet, you barely have any space above your head. So obviously by reclining it even more means that you can, but you're sat in this like super straight position in this car that's full on race car. So yeah, the countdown is on. We're going out in a few minutes. It is gonna be insane. That's fun with the LaFerrari and the uh, mirror. Yes. <laughs> we, try to, we try to, you know, have visual entertainment available. <laughs> These are the slalom poles. <laughs> exactly. There's a couple of cars out there that are going reasonably quickly. Out the pit exit onto the Guna Seca in the GT Mark II. <laughs> kind of familiar sound, but more extreme. which means it is the end of the session, but up ahead of us, we've got the 765 LT, the unplugged performance Tesla, a Koenigsegg Akira RS, and a LaFerrari out in front of that. So that's the summary of Hypercar Invitational. What a fantastic selection of cars. Just, uh, yeah, unfortunate that uh, there was a little incident back earlier in the track, and we have to take it easy and the CT5B Blackwing as well. We're going to take it easy and make our way around back to base. Well, we had black flags, so we're going to try this again. Let's hop back on board, head back out, go to Laguna Seca, chase down some supercars.
Oh, we had an amazing session, thank you. Yeah, exactly, got some clear laps and got to open up and drive. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you Pleasure. for that. All right, time to try and make a uh, dignified exit from the GT Mark II. The performance difference between road car and this is incredible. Obviously the Senna's are very, very fast cars, as I know from mine. And as we nearly saw one getting a little bit slidey around there as Col Trofeo was meet obviously the tarmac. But yeah, that was really cool as an experience just to literally run rings around supercars in the GT Mark II. And I apologize for my crazy helmet hair right now. It's a very, very, very hot day. But what a cool opportunity, a huge thanks to Y only 65. That was, that was mega. I need a moment just to cool down. Thankfully, a little bit of time to gather my breath. We did a good 10 or 11 laps, I think, there in the GT Mark II. And don't underestimate as a passenger that many laps in a race car on slicks. It certainly shakes you up a little bit. Although, I suppose I'm getting more and more used to it the more of these kind of things that I've done. But to experience the GT Mark II, which I've been intrigued by since it was introduced. I remember when it was launched at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, and I've seen them a number of times over the years. Obviously, only 45 cars compared to the 1,200, 1,300 or so of the road cars that exist out there. And just to spend a little bit more time seeing it and you know looking at the bodywork and the louvres and the this gurney that's attached over the front of the radiators and you use something like this is to direct the air up so that the air out of here is sucked out faster obviously for the cooling and all the aerodynamics and just to have a car which is so planted and while riding in the passenger seat experiencing the different lines and things through the corners that were being tested as we went and the different ways that you can control it and one thing that really stood out is when the back starts to break away just like in the road car it's very recognizable and controllable it doesn't take you by surprise and it comes back around really fast as well so to see that and how the road car is so closely related to the race car sibling also has been quite a fun experience and especially with these two here the matching spec cars very 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 special so what an awesome few laps chasing and running rings around supercars at laguna seca during hypercar invitational what an event what a car a huge thanks to yme 65 who's done some awesome things as well with charitable rides in this car in some of the other cars from the collection do go give a follow if you haven't already but that's it for this time thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again very soon cheers <laughs>